All right, guys, we are going to dive into the deep end of football tactics today. I, this might be a terrible idea. I'm an American, American football coach. I've only been in love with the beautiful game since like seven months ago when I first started watching this. I knew nothing then. I barely know anything now, but you guys love the tactical reactions. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Jose Mourinho, um, the masterclass uh, about the Inter Milan versus Barcelona, uh, I guess first leg of the Champions League, Inter 3, Barcelona 1. This is the coach's voice. I'm going to hear from the man himself. We'll see if I understand what's going on here. This might be excellent content or it might be a terrible flop. But here we go. April 20, 2010. This is 2010 Champions League semi-final first leg uh, at the San Siro, Inter uh, Barcelona. And we played with Julius Cesar in goal. We played with the back four, Maicon, Lucio, uh, Samuel and Zanetti. And then we had, during the game, um, a different positioning in relation to the um, to the movement of uh, Barcelona uh, players and to the the um, our analyze of our difficulties and after also analyzing our possibilities of um, of hurting uh, the opponents is a two leg is a two leg the first leg at home and obviously we know that um, the second leg in Barcelona would be even a more difficult match for us to play. Um, but basically this was uh, Mota and Cambiasso and Schneider, um, Eto and, and Pandev and Diego Milito. So is this and, a, um, I'm guessing this is a 4-2-3-1 that they're running. But like, you, like I said in the last tactical video, the tactics are so fluid, you can go in and out of a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-3. You, you can switch in and out of tactics so fast, um, and the game is so fluid, depending on what the other team does. So thinking of it as like a chess line, how you, um, you have an opening line that you play, but as soon as the opponent takes that away, you have to switch tactics. Um, you don't normally, you don't really play the same philosophy um, throughout all the time so um, but this looks like he played a, a base of a 4-2-3-1 in some moments of uh, of the game we bring uh, Pandev more to the inside and Eto more close to Diego and being Moss occupying the central zone with almost with almost a diamond but giving Eto the chance to try to be more close to to Diego but this was the basic the basic situation. Barcelona at that time, uh, even still today, uh, even before that, uh, the back four and then uh, Busquets, uh, Xavi, Keita, Iniesta was not starting the, uh, starting the game and then uh, Ibrahimovic was the striker. Um, this was Pedro and this is Whoa. the way I... I've I didn't know Ibrahimovic played for Barcelona. All right. Some some player that they had there, uh, uh, Messi. He's <laughs> this was the guy, and was um, was with him that That's we funny. started by analyzing and trying to predict the game and to trying to anticipate the um, and trying to anticipate the problems. At that time, they had Ibra as a nine and fixing uh, the center backs, and Messi was playing from the right, but obviously obviously with the freedom to go to many different to many mm -hmm. different areas um, Dani Alves was the player to to go forward uh, all the time and to try to create this situation this situation here uh, our decision basically was what we are going to do when this situation happened of Messi going mm. in between the lines and Alves going forward are we going to get uh, Zanetti on uh, Zanetti on Messi, but then he will be dragged out of position, and then Alves will be all the time in here, and then Pandev O2 they are going to end playing almost as as left back. What? How are we going to 
to resolve this situation and the situation for us was was very very clear which was he cannot play alone when mm. he come in between the lines so this player here must be a player totally in control of this area here always in communication with the left back and there is a moment where he becomes yours and I stay in the zone mm. but if off. in a certain moment you were attracted by other positions and Messi goes into these positions in between the lines you have to decide to go but then if you decide to go you have to defend Alves so there was a combination of, mm. of ideas but basically everything was around not let Messi uh, play um, I remember after the game um, the press was was telling about using a word um, in Italy they were using the word gabbia that sh that I think the real translation is about um, you know like a, like a jail like a jail mm. to uh, to Messi because in the end we didn't play man to man but Zanetti, Mota, Cambiasso, mm. uh, everybody was, was... So you're not playing man-to-man, -man. you're playing like a zone-type defense, but you're, you're trying to pin like a jail, like you're trying to keep Mex Messi in this, in this box where he's not going um, alone into that space right there. Somebody's always traveling with him. Um, yeah, so I, I see what he's saying here. You're not really playing strictly man-to-man, -man. you're switching off easily... Somebody's always got to be with him. Was responsible for any position that Messi could could go. Even if Messi sometimes was trying to go more to this side here, he would always go. And then Schneider mm. was going to close. So our defensive approach was based on this positional problem and probably the only positional problem that we had. A part of that, we just need to be, to be really uh, compact and don't give them don't give them too much uh, too much space they are going to have the ball uh, more than than us much more than us obviously because many many times they were moving the ball without hurting and we must be mentally strong to cope with uh, with that let mm. them have the ball but not yeah that's interesting i saw in my last tactical video where somebody said something about um, how peps peps philosophy was um, basically total football is controlling um, or you know tiki taka is controlling the possession of the ball we're going to play beautiful possession football we're not going to let the other not going to let the opponent have the ball and I, I like that philosophy I think that's my philosophy of coaching is basically playing keep away from the opponent if we have the ball they're less likely to score but but in order to do that, you have to play mistake-free, and you have to be technically proficient, and you have to have the players who are able to maintain possession and control possession. But someone was commenting that uh, Jose Mourinho, he made a career out of the opposite philosophy, which is um, if you have the ball longer, you're going to make a mistake. <laughs> and when you make a mistake, we're going to capitalize on that, and we're going to use counterattack and, and beat, you on, beat you on the mistakes, um, basically. And so he understands, in his mind, he understands that they've got Messi, they've got um, Xavi, they've got Busquets. Nobody's getting the ball from them. They're going to they're gonna play a dominant, um, uh, a dominant brand of controlling the ball. And they're, but, but when they make mistakes, we need to be quick on the counterattack. And we need to have a plan for how we're going to um, we're, we're gonna play this without dominating possession creating uh, many chances for us. The second part of the plan was exactly how to hurt them, how to hurt them, because it's a first leg at home. We need to win the match, we need to score goals. Obviously, that's the strategy to try to hurt them was in our attacking transition, the moment we, the moment we recover the ball. And we knew, of course, the way of uh, of their building up, uh, going with uh, Alves and Maxwell uh, forwards, really, really wide, and um, giving lots of of spaces, 
and then because we were always trying to make it compact and bringing Pandev Etu all to the inside and to make it a very compact area, letting the ball go to the sides and then when they define the side then we decide that this is the trigger for us to for us to press. And um the point the point in, in here was even if we don't have the white player in 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 a clear position to attack these spaces behind Maxwell and, and Alves was to get players into these positions from the compact block we had not to be afraid to attack these spaces where we we, we are going to mm. to hurt them and um, and we had uh, Maicon that was absolutely phenomenal uh, that night attacking these spaces against a player that we knew uh, very very well Maxwell um, very strong with with the ball but not so strong in the recovering of these of these uh, spaces Alves of course the culture of Barcelona was for mm. Alves to to go always in depth in depth in depth and attacking the spaces that normally opponents were going to give them because of Messi coming to the uh, to the inside and then we needed to attack these spaces where Puyol and Piquet they were very they were very um, exposing and um, we we knew that they were very strong on the defensive transition in the opposition half so we knew that the places where they lose the ball they were very very strong by trying to press and push it up and close mm. every possible space but then we knew yeah that's something and it's it's hard for me to think the way that Mourinho thinks or it's it's easy for me to think the way that Pep thinks I think that's why his philosophy makes more sense to me as soon as you lose the ball you need to have someone you need your defense to be pressing like you need them there immediately because um, you need to get those number mismatches so that you can force the ball back into your possession again so like you need to sell out to regain possession as soon as you lose possession so like Pep's philosophy as he's explaining what Pep is doing like it makes sense to me like that's to me that's the best way it's I guess that's just the way that my mind works is similar to the way that Pep thinks tactically um yeah so i guess that's if i was going to be a, a, co a coach of the beautiful game i would probably uh, uh subscribe to more of pep's kind of philosophy than jose this is very interesting to hear um he obviously understands pep's philosophy well because they have to beat it so maybe that's more what's going on here is like they have to beat pep at his own game it'd be interesting to to watch man I, I love this i'm i know this is diving into the deep end for me um trying to understand what's going on here but i think i'm catching it like if you guys think so let me know down below and also while you're there smash that like button for me i really need uh the support there for the youtube algorithm so we can increase this community anyway let's go on that also because that was not the kind of challenge that they had to face week in week out in the Spanish league um, they were not so good coping with the spaces and we had very fast people we had very fast people attacking the spaces and we had people with the right mentality and the right coaching of arriving into these positions so we were fundamentally going from a defensive low block but going very very strong with three four five players into attacking positions in the in the transition and um and it worked i think uh i think it worked and it's quite hard to say uh when we had 30 percent of of ball possession and the opposition had 70 <laughs> but i think we were more close more close we had more chance not not chances wow. chances but opportunities that we can read we had more after the three one we had more chances to score the fourth than than to be really really in um, 
in trouble. We were we were totally in in control. <laughs> That's crazy. They could be in control with thirty percent of the possession. That is crazy to me. Wow. The second goal is exactly what I was saying before. Barcelona very strong and very well educated to the moment they lose the ball to try to press and to try to kill immediately the opposition counter-attack because this is the area where they want to play all the time. Mm -hmm. And we were educated to attack the spaces behind them. So in this situation here, we had always lots of players ready to attack the space behind both fullbacks. Mm. Which player should attack these spaces? Anyone. In this case, the player that attacked the space was Milito. Mm. And then, when the ball reached Milito in this area here, is a question of who is going to arrive. Us or them? And we were very adapted and very coached and also with the right mentality and the right effort and the right ambition to make people arrive in here. So when the ball gets into a player here, in this case was Milito, now the point is looking... But how does the ball get to him there? Unless he had the ball before he makes that move, he's in an offside position. So they can't pass to him. So I'm not understanding... Obviously, I haven't watched the game, so I don't know what the, what, what the play he's talking about here. But... How can he get into that position where they can get the ball to him? How does the ball get there unless he has it with him already from the beginning? Um, so I don't know if the play, if he dribbled the ball into that position, but it doesn't seem like that's what he's setting up. I just don't know how they'd get the ball passed to him. But then again, I'm seven months into this, so have some grace on me here. At this, how many whites, how many oranges are going to get into the scoring uh, position? And... I, I know that this is the guy that is going to arrive, which is which is Maicon, is going to arrive in here. But we have also, to give sequence of this, I think we have also um, a Pandev and, and maybe Schneider also coming. So we, we, after that ball to Milito, we managed to put two or three players more, was Schneider and Eto or Schneider and, 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 and Pandev arriving, arriving also here, plus the incredible run of, of Maicon. How many of them they were arriving? It was more difficult for them. I think uh, Keita Busquets, they couldn't cope with this, with this run. I think uh, uh, Maxwell and Messi or Pedro in this position, they never thought that Maicon was going to arrive. So the second and the third goal, they had this similarity of hers hurting them in the attacking uh, uh, transition. All right, quickly, I am going to find this play. I've got to watch this. So here we go. I'm going to watch this um, due to copyright. I might not be playing this on the screen. We'll find out. All right. So they Barcelona loses possession. Melito. Oh! Okay, I think I think I see what happened here, but I want to see the other angle. All right, yeah, so Maicon shows up there because he made an amazing run from that corner because they didn't expect him to make that run. Um, wow, let me see that beginning of the play again. All right, Messi loses possession here. Looking for a foul, looking for a foul. But they get that ball going the other way immediately and they're trying to attack that space behind the fullbacks 
And to be fair, like Barcelona all stops because they all think that there's a there's a penalty here, but no foul. And yeah, I see Mikon coming from this back position, way back here. He takes off. All right, so he's making. Uh, I don't know who this player is here, right, right here, but he's making a great run. Everyone's following him. Mike, look at Mikon just flying from that other corner. So they get the ball to Melito. He's not offside because this other player is tracking or marking this other player. All right. Not offsides. Melito gets the ball. And Mikon just flying down the pitch and is in position for the goal. Okay, now I get it. Now I understand what he's... Now I understand. It's interesting when you watch him with the, I don't know, the little circles on the table. I can kind of understand tactically what he's talking about, but until I see it played out, I don't really understand that play. That's an amazing goal. Wow. Fun to watch. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like these tactical kind of breakdowns where I'm really trying to, to learn the tactics of the game. And please let me know in the comments smash the like button man can we get this video to a thousand likes that's a big goal but can we get this video to a thousand likes that'd be awesome uh, the last video that I, I did with tactics we got about 30,000 views man if we get a thousand likes on this one I'm sure that we could hit another 30k maybe 50k on the views here let people know about this community share these videos like them comment let the algorithm know that you guys love this content that way more people can join in on this community and i can make even more awesome content like i don't know match day vlogs actually travel traveling to these countries to watch games in the in the arena actually soaking up the atmosphere and the culture of football um, if you like that kind of stuff i've got big plans for the channel here so i'd like to have you on board um, so that we can we can explode this channel to the moon that's where we're headed all right that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.